Sabalonia Village, Russia, December 1997. In the cold, unforgiving forests of eastern Siberia, a local hunter named Vladimir Markov discovers the bloody carcass of a wild boar lying half-eaten in the snow. He instantly realizes he's in great danger because he has just stumbled upon a fresh kill made by one of Russia's most dangerous predators, the Siberian tiger. At the point where Vladimir Markov realized that he was coming upon the tiger's kill, he knew that the tiger will still be there. So it'll still feed upon that kill until there's nothing left to feed on. So if he doesn't shoot that tiger first, the tiger will kill him. So it was a case for him of kill or be killed. As the tiger approached Markov to defend its kill, he fired his rifle, but only wounded the angry cat. Injured, the tiger retreated back into the forest. But that's not the end of the story. Because two days later, the local authorities were informed that Markov had been attacked and killed at his home by a vicious tiger. When investigators arrived at Markov's log cabin, they found a disturbing scene. It's pretty remarkable seeing the images. There was obviously quite a lot of blood, clothes are tattered everywhere. Often when tigers kill people, it's not necessarily for food. But in Markov's case, the tiger ate everything it possibly could of him. It wanted to leave no trace of the man. The strangest part of the Vladimir Markov story is the fact that the tiger actively destroyed everything around that lodge that had Vladimir's scent on it. Just destroyed it in seemingly a fit of anger. But even more unsettling than the gruesome killing itself was the fact that investigators later determined that Markov was eaten by the same tiger he had shot with his rifle. The tiger tracked Vladimir back to his hunting lodge, a distance of 11 kilometers, and then it waited. That is what is remarkable. It waited, I think, around 48 hours for him to return to that lodge. And then when Vladimir returned, it killed him. The story of Vladimir Markov's death at the hands of a deadly tiger is frightening. But it's also mysterious. Because while animals will naturally defend themselves when attacked, this tiger tracked Markov down over an unusually long distance. But why? Big predators will kill smaller predators with which they compete. And there's a long history of human competition with predators. So it's possible the tiger was viewing this as competition and I want to get rid of a competitor because this is a threat to my livelihood. So don't steal food from tigers is the lesson that stands out from Markov's story. Did the tiger kill Markov because it viewed him as a threat to its survival? Perhaps. But there are those who believe that it was motivated, not by self-preservation, but rather by a desire to exact revenge. You can't look at this story of Vladimir and not think that this is a story of vengeance. The tiger stopped Vladimir's cabin. It waited for Vladimir to return home for the attack. Everything here points to premeditation. And you look at other instances, you see attacks with tigers who will seek vengeance on people they don't like. These animals can feel these emotions. All animals have neurochemical responses, which are remarkably similar across all sorts of species. They feel, emotions are feelings that influence behavior. It's exactly the same as we do. Do not mess with the tiger. If you do that, it's gonna come after you. Markov will have known that when he shot that tiger and it didn't die, he knew that his time was up. This tiger had the ability to hold a grudge with a single individual for over 48 hours and then take its revenge. We have taken dominion over nature in many ways because of our technological developments, but we are still a part of nature and we are still occasionally on the menu of bigger and stronger animals such as tigers.